<laughs> this is all stuff that we're not supposed to talk about. How about this? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Leilani of Barbados. Don't tell anybody I'm back. Oh, my goodness. I have been having a back and forth with my contact at YouTube about this Meghan Markle New York City incident. And I realized that even mainstream media is having a problem reporting the hoax that happened. We're not allowed to talk about that because that's her truth and how she felt at the moment. Even Gail King has come out and said, you know, she's very upset that people do not believe how Meghan felt in that moment and Harry and whatever. She's taking issue with people calling out Meghan and Harry for their lies, their lies about the car chase. She has real concerns about people questioning this story. And what's really important is how the couple felt. How did they feel? That's really what we should be focused on. And she wants us to really try to have more empathy for this couple. Gail, girl, bye. You have a $12 million contract with CNN to talk to Meghan and Harry. And if they come across as frauds, your interview with them will not be that good. Because I think the focal point of that interview was going to be like, we need all the security and we have all these people after us and the paps and this and that. And I think that was going to be New York, the New York incident. Had it gone according to plan, it would have been perfect for you to talk about and highlight. By the way, nobody watches Gail King. Okay, so nobody cares what she says. I don't know if Gail King had some kind of vocal surgery to sound just like Oprah, but nobody likes a copycat. And Gail King to me is creepy because she just sounds like Oprah. She looks like Oprah. She acts like Oprah. It's just, ugh. But anyway, she's trying to get her money, her coin. So they're all trying to put the kibosh on us YouTubers for downplaying the incident. Um, because it's not as if eyewitnesses like the taxi driver, Sunny Singh, haven't downplayed the catastrophe. No, of course not. Did it feel like the paparazzi were being aggressive? aggressive? No, 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 not. I mean, they were behind us. I mean, they stayed on top of us. That was pretty much it. It was nothing more, you know. They kept a distance. It's just like journalists, just like everybody else trying to get pictures. You didn't see any cars going over curbs or people banging on oh, your window? Oh, I didn't see that. No, 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 no. Also, the reason why they didn't stay in a hotel apparently was because, well, the Carlisle, which I said they should stay in, if you remember, they did approach the Carlisle. However, they wanted a huge discount. <laughs> this is all stuff that we're not supposed to talk about. How about this? I've kept a secret for a very long time. I have family friends who own a hotel in Jamaica. And when Meghan Markle was married to Trevor, she went down to Jamaica. In fact, I think she had her wedding there. The point is, she asked my friends who own a hotel, local Jamaican people, regular people, for a huge discount. I've held on to that for a long time because I wasn't supposed to say it. But now that the Carla has come out about it, I can say it. The only thing I can't tell you is whether or not they did give them a discount. But the point is that she is cheap. And she has been asking for discounts for a very long time. Because at the time, she wasn't even on suits. She was a suitcase girl. Because remember when she married Trevor, that's when she moved to Canada. And that's where she was not with him. And then that's where she sent back the engagement ring and the wedding ring back to him from Canada. So for all intents and purposes, she wasn't even that famous. But guess who isn't cheap about hotels? Prince Harry, he has permanently hired a room at the San Vicente, San Vicente bungalows in Montecito so that he doesn't have to stay in his $12 million mansion with Meghan. This is what they are reporting in mainstream news. Are we allowed to talk about that? I mean, it obviously tracks with everything that we've seen. We've seen the snub at the basketball game, the kiss snub. We've seen how distressed he looked in New York City. And I want to say this about New York City, huh? That plan, I don't think he was part of it. He looked genuinely distressed. And she's just living her best life. She's hiking. She's living her life like it's golden, dressing up in golden dresses and getting awards and everything. What that ended up doing, though, is what I want to say, is it brought back all the memories of his mother, the car crashes. Everybody kept putting up these pictures of the Diana car crash to say, well, this is the same thing that happened to Diana. And then he has to look at all of that. I think it was a bridge too far even for harry who has mental health issues who is using psychedelic you know treatments on himself and he's not in a good place as it is but i think that must have been really hard on him and I'm, I'm being serious but let me talk about something else how can you say that you're going to put out a full feature 
full-length feature film though on Netflix about your time in the palace and expose all the secrets in the palace and do all of that but we cannot with freedom of speech the first amendment which by the way Harry said was bonkers and he obviously does think it's bonkers right because he's trying to silence everybody and censor everybody how can you do all of that but we if we literally report the news like literally the mayor the police force everybody has come out and spoken and said this literally I'm saying literally too much, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm hated. <laughs> this did not happen in New York City and we can't say anything about it because YouTube will be like, hey guys, we're trying to not talk about that too much. Apparently we're not supposed to talk about that. The fact of the matter is that Meghan and Harry are the laughing stock of the entire planet. And honestly, I think they're, I think they're a joke. They have had to go into hiding. They did not celebrate their anniversary. Usually they call the paps. I guess Backgrid and Megan are no longer friends. So they didn't have Backgrid to call. But can we just talk about how Meghan Markle cannot dress to save her life? Cropped leather pants, a camel coat, backless shoes. They're orange. What's going on? I cannot figure it out. I've been trying. I cannot figure it out. Oh, she did not even go to receive her award for her podcast. You know, she got that silly award for her podcast in Beverly Hills and she did not even go for that to collect it. Has anyone watched my videos on that podcast? Because my ears were bleeding. How impossible it is for her to receive an award based on that podcast. Oh, look, from the New York Post, Meghan Markle podcast guest implies Duchess didn't actually interview her. Well, of course she should get an award then. That is the worst podcast Ever. When she wasn't sighing and deep breathing and yawning through her guests, she was being snarky. She was exposing them. She was bringing up things that were said about them, but in post, huh? in post-production. So what she would do is she'd interview them ish, not really. Then in post-production, like I'm saying, she would say, yeah, so this person's been accused of lying all the time. And this person has been <laughs> and she almost reinforces the stereotypes the way that it is scripted, okay? The worst podcast ever. And like I said, when she's actually talking to them, she sounds like she's lying down somewhere in a bed, going like, oh, yeah, well, whatever. <coughs> anyway, you have to watch my videos on the podcast. I covered most of the episodes. And it was, it was insane. The fact that she's getting an award for that is paid for. I can imagine that she would have got hits. I'm not saying not, you know, because she's Duchess now and all that. They probably were, were like curious, like what's she going to do? She did a lot on the Oprah. Let's see what she's going to do now. The worst part about it is that by some unfortunate power, Megan was able to reinforce the stereotypes of these tropes that she was actually trying to change. So just based on that alone, she should have not been given an award because she didn't even accomplish the goal that she set out to accomplish. But um, I just wanted to end with this little note. I've noticed that there are a lot of people talking about Harry's visa being revoked based on the treatment that he is... That, look, based on his use of substances, okay? And that if that was a normal person and if that was part of their application, that they would have had a very prolonged application with a lot of questions asked and investigation before they received a visa for the United States. I think he's on a zero one visa, which is a very special visa, which is reserved for scientists and geniuses and people who are curing cancer. I've said this many times. It's a very special visa. And as I think especially with that visa carries a lot of responsibility. So what happens when you come here and you start doing interviews and you start promoting dangerous things? I have to be very careful. Dangerous treatment, dangerous substances, and just a dangerous outlook on life, though. So what do we do about that? And you're in the public eye, and everyone's saying, hmm, is he being treated specially for no reason? And speaking of being treated specially, the IPP status, that is an internationally protected person status. Yes, he will definitely lose that in the UK. He's lost it already. He's not working with the royal family. And I find that really interesting that he tried to get out of there as soon as possible after his father's coronation because he did have protection when he was with his family. And he can't even pay for Scotland Yard to protect him now 
I can't imagine how he would be successful in getting the taxpayers to pay. And speaking of the taxpayers, they've spent 300,000 pounds on his legal debacle that he lost. He spent 500,000 pounds and the taxpayer has spent 300,000 pounds. So yay for us. Okay. <laughs> Six more to go. So hopefully they chop, chop and get that out of the way quickly and do not waste any more of our money so that he can go back with his tail between his legs like he's been doing. Thank you so much for watching me. <laughs> hopefully I don't get any trouble with this video, but you know what it is. We got to do what we got to do. We have to report these things and I will be seeing you back this weekend. Love you. Love you so much. Bye. <laughs>